What's up, YouTube? It's Caleb for Caleb the Video Maker 2. In this video, we are going to be talking about naming our constraints. So, I'm an idiot and I forgot to do something important in the last video, and that is make these columns foreign keys. So, we will do that in just a moment, but for now, I wanted to talk about this primary key. And if you go to the Object Explorer and expand that database, we'll go to Subscribe, Tables, Interests, Keys, you can see there's one primary key. And we talked about how disgusting this name was. And we want to change that. That's what we were going to do. And then I'll talk about naming foreign keys. And that's when I'll put the foreign keys on the other columns. So this is at the table level right now. And you can see it's right here. And it's very easy to add a name. All you have to do is add the constraint keyword and then give it a name. Now, what do you name it? Well, that is up to you ultimately, but there are some conventions. There's something known as Hungarian notation. And what that is, is where we put what the thing is inside of the name. <laughs> So for example, we could say PK underscore and then give it a name. And that PK is a prefix that says what the thing is. <laughs> some people like this, some people don't like it, some people prefer at the end. That is ultimately up to you, but I'm going to follow this convention for right now. So I'll say PK and then I will put the table name. So that way we know this is the constraint for the interests table. And specifically, it's a primary key constraint. You can figure that out just by reading the name. So let's run the script. I'll make sure I am on the subscribe database because I forget that every stinking time. <laughs> and now let's run this. All right, and you can see that it executed successfully. So let's go back to our object explorer, go to keys and refresh. There you go. You can see that it's nice and beautiful. <laughs> now let's talk about how to do that with foreign keys. It's very similar. We're going to put the foreign keys at the table level. So I'm going to start right here and I will say constraint give it a name, fk underscore. Now, what are we going to name it? Well, we will name it the first table, so interests, and then the second table, which is the table of references. So interests, and this one is going to be for the animal ID, so I'll say animals. Then you have to say the constraint type, which is foreign key, and then you have to say what column it is on in parentheses. So this is on the animal ID, and then you have to say what it references. First you put the table, so it'll be animals, and then in parentheses you say the column. And there you go. You can see this is a little bit more long than the primary key, but overall it's not too complicated. Normally all you have to do is put references animal ID up here with the column, but if you want to put it at the table level, this is what you need to do. Let's add another column for the species ID. It'll be pretty similar. And there we go. Now let's run this and make sure everything works. Awesome. Let's check the Object Explorer, do a refresh on our keys, and you can see these foreign keys have such beautiful names. <laughs> Why do we care that much though? The reason is that when we try to insert data into these tables and for some reason something's incorrect, it's going to give us an error and say the constraint name. And if we have these nice beautiful names, it's much easier to figure out what constraints it's talking about. And we will talk about that in the next video when we learn about the insert statement. So hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, be sure to click subscribe and like. This is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. Peace out. Man, my outros just get longer and longer every time. <laughs>